Jesus. Are you ready for the word tonight? Yeah. Let's welcome Brother Kenneth Copeland. Come on. Thank you, Praise God. Praise God. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Glory to God. Oh, I tell you, I love testimonies. I, tell, I get such a, such a thrill hearing the, the workings of the Spirit and to know that our God lives. Amen. You know, testimonies, testimonies don't bring faith. They nourish. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, faith words nourish. And a, a testimony nourishes you, <laughs> nourishes your faith. Amen. Now, see, if you're, you're faithless, you're sitting there hearing that testimony and think, oh, I wonder if he's really sick. You know, <laughs> miracles don't cause believers. I mean, God would blow the roof off of the house and somebody would think, well, now I wonder what was the matter with their roof. <laughs> Amen. But when, when you have faith in your heart and somebody gives a testimony, Oh man, it nourishes your faith. It nourishes you and thrills you. Praise God. Many, many, many times I've seen it over the years. Jerry and I both have seen this where, uh, and, and I've noticed it in my own life and I know it's happened to glory where you're believing God and you're, you're, you're walking on this thing and you, you know your faith is working and somebody gives their testimony and zip there come your miracle right then. I mean, it just slipped right on through as you heard them and as you're rejoicing with them and, the, and the, the power of God manifested in your own life. Father, we give you praise tonight for these things. We worship you and bless you in it, sir. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 In response to these good testimonies and all of the other testimonies that are happening right now, I want you to sing this with me. <clears throat> oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds Your hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my soul. When I think 
that God his son not sparing sent him to die Lord I scarce can take it in that on that cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and he died to take away my sin Amazing grace Oh how sweet the sound that saved glad you're a believer yeah. isn't it just the most wonderful thing to know Jesus yeah. and all of you all of you out there on the internet and so forth that if you don't know him what are you wasting your time Bob Allen? hey so well brother Copeland I reckon he'd have anything to do with me Come on, baby. Don't talk like that about Jesus. My, come on. He said, anyone comes to me, I will for no reason. Zero. No reason cast him out. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll lead you in prayer right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I receive you as my healer. I receive you tonight. And I'm asking you to receive me. Thank you, sir. I believe you. I believe your word. Fill me now to overflowing 
with your precious Holy Spirit. I repent of sin. I renounce it. I renounce the past. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. Jesus is my Lord. And I will serve you, Lord Jesus, all the days of my life. Now give him praise and honor and glorify his name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, just praise and bless his holy name. Just reverence the Lord. Just reverence his name. The glory's here. The glory is in the house. Hallelujah. The glory is here. The healer's in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe, Lord, I receive, Lord, I receive all things are possible. Now this may be somebody here in the congregation, but I'm, I'm mostly impressed about someone on the internet watch, watching online right now. You have had chronic hiccups and nothing anybody has been able to do to stop it. But I want you to know right now, in the name of Jesus, thus saith the Lord, hiccups stop now. Right now. Say, that's mine, I take it. Amen. Now just put your hand right, right, right up here. I take that, Lord. I take that, Lord. Glory to God. I take that, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now when I, when I, when I put my, my hand here, right, right in my, my, my upper chest right here, the moment I touched it, I heard the Lord say, all kinds of ailments in the throat and in the chest and in this whole area. The respiratory system, gallbladder, all this whole area, heart, anything in, the, anything in this area right here, the power is there to heal you right now. The power is there to heal you right now. Hallelujah. Say, I take it, it's mine. Jesus bought and paid for it and gave it to me. Himself bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. And by his stripes, I am healed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was, uh, well, praise the Lord, you can be seated. Thanks, guys. Haven't they done a marvelous job this whole meeting? I'm telling you, praise God. Now, I know there are pastors here tonight, and I know the Criders, and, and, and um, <laughs> you know, and um, 
There's a lot of good churches represented here, and James Gardner and his fine church. And I know y'all think you got the best praise and worship team, but I hate to spring this on you. <laughs> no, there's the best right there. <laughs> hey, that's the best right there. Glory to God. This afternoon, I began saying that phrase, himself bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases, and by his stripes I am healed. And I've said it a number of times. And it brought back to my memory, back in the very early days of this ministry, when God had, had first so impressed me to never compromise his word, that if he said, I'm healed, I'm healed. That I don't ask myself how I feel about it. If he said, by his stripes, I'm healed, then praise God, I'm healed. It doesn't make any difference what I feel like. It makes a difference what he said. And... Uh, that had grown so large in me. And I was, I'd been on the, been out in the field for, for some time, meeting after meeting after meeting. And uh, <laughs> I had all kinds of symptoms of sickness, tiredness, weakness. I mean, <laughs> you know, it just, Really, really, and, and hurting. I just, just, I was just a mess, you understand? <laughs> and then here came all the symptoms of the flu. Oh. And, uh, you know, we don't quit. Uh uh. We don't take sick leave. No, no. Amen. No, no. That's, that, that's not in the plan. And I, I started saying that himself bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases and by his stripes I'm healed. And, and I've kept saying that and kept saying that. And I'm, 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 I'm walking around my little hotel room there and getting ready for the night service. And I kept saying that and kept saying that. And the devil kept coming at me and said, you're not going to get it this time. You are not going to get it this time. I said, no, you don't understand something, Satan. You don't understand. I don't have to get it. I already have it. See, Jesus got it for me 2,000 years ago. It's not my job to get it. It's my job to receive it. And he just kept pushing me and kept pushing me. And the more he pushed, the more I said it. And I just kept saying it. I kept saying it. And I kept saying it. And I, and I thought... <laughs> <laughs> you know how you, you're doing something like this and then some, some ignoramus thought comes to you. <laughs> and I, I thought, I wonder how many times I'm going to have to say this for the Because <laughs> I receive it now. I receive it now. And then I said, I don't care how many times I have to say this. Amen. And so I just kept saying it, and kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it. I said that 729 times and nothing happened that you could tell. Now, it's not, I'm not calling attention to my endurance. I don't have any endurance. No, no. But the work of patience is endurance. But I had made that decision that I'm staying. And you know, after you've said it about 20 times, you think, well, surely that's enough. <laughs> and you, and when you, you know, you feel like you've said it 150 times and it wasn't but 15. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you, ever, you ever decide you're going to pray in, in, you're going to pray in the spirit, you're going to pray in tongues for an hour. Yeah. And you think, oh, surely that's it. Five minutes. What do you mean? Five <laughs> well, the 730th time I said that, I want you to know the power of God hit me right above my heels. 
it came up the back of my legs. It came up through my back and it felt like it just shot right out of my head and out like that. Wow. I, it just, it literally overhauled me. Praise, strengthened me, encouraged me, wow. built me up. Beside that, it healed all those symptoms, man. Amen. Now, when you say 729 times and nothing happens, see, that's not accurate because faith's coming. Faith's coming. I heard me say that every time I said it because you have to understand, all I'm doing is giving voice to what God is saying. That's right. Did you pick up on that? I'm just giving voice to what God is saying. That's important. Some of you about two o'clock in the morning, you're going to wake up and say, oh yeah, I got, I got that. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Himself bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. And by his stripes, I am healed. And I noticed, I noticed, and it happened again this afternoon, uh, as, as you're saying it, and you're saying it in faith, you're not, you're not just rattling off. There's a big difference between the yes. two. And you settle that before you ever start in. Mm-hmm. You, you settle that. Lord, I am saying this by faith. Amen. Amen. And I hear it by faith. Go to the Word and get those scriptures that you're, that you're quoting and you put them in your eyes and you put them in your ears coming out your mouth and you look at them and you look at them. Amen. Don't, don't just quote them from memory. Now, after, after, you're, after you're doing that, you can walk around with your Bible in your hand. Amen. Get that up and read it again. Say, Lord, I feed on this. I feed on this. I'm speaking my faith. Thus saith the Lord himself bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. And by his stripes, I am healed. And I noticed it had come out like this. Himself bore my sicknesses. And then I'm going along in a little bit. It'll say, himself. <laughs> Whoa, that happened to me this afternoon. Himself, and I stopped and thought, God himself bore my sicknesses. So I don't have any. He bore mine. Mine are gone. Woo, glory to God. There ain't no sickness or disease belongs to me. And any symptom that t- tries to attach itself to my body don't belong to me. So why should I take it? Right. Why should I accept it? It ain't mine. Right. Amen. Belongs to anybody, belongs to the devil. Amen. Let him have the symptoms. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's open our Bibles tonight to the Luke chapter four. Father, we are so blessed and grateful tonight. Sir, it is our honor. It is our privilege tonight to gather in the presence of Jesus because Jesus You said when you were on the earth that if two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so we know you're here. And we thank you for, we thank you, sir, for honoring us with your presence. We thank you for revelation of your word insight, ideas, and concepts, heaven-born, heaven revelation, words from heaven that release your power in the earth. And sir, we thank you for it. We give you all of the praise and all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, are you believing with me tonight, please? Uh, <laughs> whoa, I've got about, um, 
I have at least uh, at least a week's <laughs> material inside me tonight. <laughs> and God has been been talking to me all, all day today about about something. And, and, and I, I need you to use your faith and believe God with me that, that I will, uh, that, that I, I hear correctly and I speak correctly according to his spirit. Luke chapter four, verse 16. All right, let's start with verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Now, put a mark of some kind by verse 14 and cross-reference it with verse 18. And I'll show you one of them. Jesus returned, let, let, well, well, let me just give it to you now. Jesus returned in the anointing power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So I want you to notice that he didn't just, he didn't just lay the book down and start reading anywhere it just happened to be. He found what you and I know as the 61st chapter of Isaiah. He took a specific text and he started at a specific spot and he stopped at a very strategic part of those verses. So it's, it's very, uh, it, it, it's, it's very purposeful what he's saying. And it has to do with this anointing. Amen. Amen. Now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, according to verse 14, we could say, and the Spirit of the power of God, the power of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He hath sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, and he has sent me to preach recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now notice the wording of, uh, of verse 21. This, this is very important to what we're looking at tonight. And don't ever forget it again. Throughout all your Bible study, remember this. And he began to say, it didn't say, and he said, he began to say, which means that he never did end that sermon. Hold your place there and go to the book of Acts chapter one. You got your shouting shirt on tonight. <laughs> the former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Jesus. Amen. Now, what does that mean? That means he's not done. 
That means he didn't get through in the book of Acts. That means he's not through yet. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now go back over there to that uh, 21st verse. He began to say to them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. That is summary of what he preached that day. And Praise God. Now notice, he gave the book again to the leader of the synagogue. Gave him the book. And he sat down. And he preached a message entitled, This Day is the Scripture Fulfilled in Your Ears. Now, I don't know whether it took an hour or two hours. I don't, I, I, I don't know. Praise God. Probably didn't take all that long because wasn't anybody there believing it. <laughs> because it, it, Mark remarked about this very meeting that day. It said there he could do. It didn't say he wouldn't do. It said he could not do any mighty works because of their unbelief. Now, it might have been that he preached longer there because you can see his desire to help those hometown peoples was so strong in him that he went ahead and laid hands on some people anyway. Yeah. Amen. 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 People that had minor ailments, wasn't much wrong with them, but there were no mighty works. Not because he didn't want to. Amen. He was ready. He was ready because that's what he preached. Look what he preached. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm here to do it. I'm here. Blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. I'm here. I'm here. And they got all hung up on something else and tried to kill him. I'm like Jerry. I, I, think, we, I think we preached to that congregation at one time or another. <laughs> I know he did because <laughs> he told me about them. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Now, he preached this message and all bear him witness and they wondered. See, they weren't believing, they were wondering. Now, they were wondering at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. They weren't saying, such gracious words. <laughs> no, no. Who ever heard, who ever heard of this kind of grace? Who ever heard of such a thing? See, all they ever heard was the law. And besides that, it's only a few weeks ago he was just a carpenter. Who does he think he is? He ain't never even been to school. I know his little brother. <laughs> you know, the whole bunch is kind of, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what was going on in that place that day. Now, now that we understand what was happening in that environment there, they said, is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, you will surely say unto me, this proverb physician, heal yourself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum do also here in this country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell of you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Many lepers were in Israel in the name at the time of, Eli of Elisha, the prophet. None of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Woo, now you want to know something? They read that set them off. Whoa. Might there be just a touch of racism in the crowd? Well, those that Naaman the Syrian didn't receive healing because he was a Syrian. 
He received healing because he obeyed the prophet. Amen. Amen. Well, that, that's a whole nother avenue. We, we, we may touch on that a little bit later. Now then, let's go to the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10. Now, for the second time, we won't read all the way through all of this, but we'll read the last part of it and, and catch up with it. And uh, the, the Spirit of God, in response to a man named Cornelius, uh, the Holy Spirit divinely guided Peter to this man's home. And he's a military man. He's an officer in the military. And verse 29, therefore came I unto you without gain saying, gain saying, as soon as I was sent for. I asked therefore for what intent you sent for me. And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard, thine alms are heard, had it there, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Therefore send to Joppa, and call here Simon, whose surname is Peter. He's lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, and he will speak to you. Immediately therefore I sent for you, <clears throat> and you have done well that you have come. Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all things that are commanded you of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. Now notice verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace, preaching Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. By Jesus Christ. Now listen. Preaching peace by Jesus the anointed. Come on. <laughs> The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me. See what Peter's referring to? All right, now listen. Preaching peace by Jesus the anointed, He is Lord of all. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout, wait, let, me, let, me, let me read this like this, which was preached throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now he said this was preached beginning right after John baptized him in the River Jordan. Well, now we saw what happened there. We, we tuned in in Luke 4, right after he came, he left the River Jordan, been baptized in the Holy Ghost, and he left from right there and 40 days in the wilderness fasting before God. He came out of there. <clears throat> now, now listen. He went into that wilderness in obedience. There were great things settled between he and the Father out there that day concerning his calling and his ministry. Now, why? His time had come. He and God spent six weeks together out there. 
and he came back from that place in power. He is now ready. Amen. Amen. To minister under this mighty anointing and power. So now he started preaching it right then. Now what is interesting is that he preached throughout all Judea. So this message, now the reason, reason I was telling you earlier, don't ever forget this. His first calling and anointing was to preach. Amen. He's a preacher. Amen. 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 Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. He preached. And that is the message that he preached. Amen. That's what he preached everywhere he went. Amen. And people that would believe it Amen. received it. Amen. Blind people, he preached recovery of sight to the blind. If they were blind and believed, they got it. If they didn't, they walked away in the dark. In more ways than one. Amen. Oh, are you up with me now? You, you, you can see, see where we're headed here now? <laughs> you just think you do. <laughs> Glory to God. But we're on the way. We're working on something here. Glory to God. Now, he preached this everywhere he went. Let's take, for instance, what we have recorded when he preached the blessing. Now, I don't really know and don't care where it got labeled the Beatitudes. I've been in this ministry 48 years and I ain't never figured that out. I guess that be the attitude. I don't know. <laughs> Man, that's close as I can get. But anyway, <laughs> he was preaching the blessing. Amen. Blessed, 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 blessed. After he preached this. Now make the connection. See, he's preaching the gospel. He said, that's what this is. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Well, he's preaching the gospel to all the rest of those categories. Amen. Now, he preached all that and then he moved over into the blessing area and he's teaching them now how to walk in that anointing that they have just heard about. And a lot of them have been healed and so forth. And then he begins to say things like, don't be judging people. See, all that has to do with this message. Whew, it just gets bigger every second, doesn't it? Now, he's preaching the gospel everywhere he went and every, every message that we see on those hillsides and so forth and all the different places, standing in the boat, preaching, all those different places, he started with this. Started with this right here. And then everything else, the sower sows the word. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. All of that has to do with the gospel. Amen. 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 Now, if, when you learn, when you, when you learn to study the New Testament like that, it starts building up on the inside of you. But hey, are you ready for this? The gospel is the power of God. Amen. 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 That's good. <laughs> The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I dare you to go look up the word translated salvation. Amen. And find out it covers everything. 
Amen. Not just being born again. It is healing, deliverance. I mean, it's all there. Glory to God. Now, he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Now, somebody said, well, what is the gospel of Christ? Well, I just told you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Translate the word Christ. That, that, that was a trick. I am satisfied that Satan pulled on the body of Christ, particularly the English speaking world and, and all of the, the, the words that came like, like, for instance, there are translations in other languages that were just the King James translated into that language. And they follow the same protocol instead of Christ, it's Cristo. But the problem is still there. Hey, did, you, did, you ever th- did you ever think about uh, <laughs> what it means to baptize The word baptize means to immerse. But where did the, where did the, the sprinkling idea come from? Do we call that christening? Huh? What does the word anoint mean? One of the primary Definitions of the word to anoint is to pour on. So that became a form of anointing. And some people call it baptism. But you can see where it came from. We are christening, but nobody's mentioned anything about what Christ means in the first place. So what does christen mean? Duh. I don't know. (laughs) The Greek word Christ is translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. And the Hebrew word Messiah means to pour on. Now, what happened when the prophet anointed the king? What did he do? He poured It also means to rub or smear. Now, anointing itself is not actually a sanctified word. Neither is the word apostle. The problem is (laughs) we don't speak Greek. (laughs) It just simply means to the Greek people, it means, means somebody sent. You could be an apostle uh, for bread and not be over 12 years old. Your mama sent you to the store to get some bread. She, <laughs> she, she <laughs> and she put some sunscreen on you before you left the house. So she anointed you to be an apostle for bread. <laughs> Whoa! I don't know where that come from. I, <laughs> But you you can understand what a trick that was on English speaking people because the devil was able to twist those words and 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 us not have any comprehension of, of what actually is being said here. And when you get right down to it, it simply means it's not Jesus last name. It is not his title. It is referring to his message. Did you get it? It's referring to his calling. Let me me give you an example. Turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. And notice... Some of you are going to get one of those, oh, glory moments here. (laughs) Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. All right. 
Now let's apply what we've learned. <clears throat> Con partakers of the heavenly calling, heavenly calling. Oh, wait a minute now. Jesus, Jesus was called. Huh? Yes. Hey, this is a man. Yes. He was called to the ministry. He has heavenly calling. Yes. Amen. Yes. He walked in the confines of his calling as a prophet under the Abrahamic covenant. Glory to God. And then when he was raised from the dead, he sits at the right hand of Almighty God, the high priest, glory to God, of our time. Amen. Lord, advocate general of the church. Hallelujah. But now we are partakers of his calling. Amen. Now, listen to this. Let's apply, like I said, what we've learned. Partakers, let me put it like this. Wherefore, holy brethren, <laughs> some of you are st still hung up. I I'm on. <sighs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Now, partakers of the heavenly calling. I can't get loose from that. Look at the fifth chapter in the 10th verse, ninth verse. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, are we settled with that? Oh, that's good to be released from that. Thank you for believing. Praise God. Consider the one whom God sent and high priest of our profession. The word translated profession means to say exactly the same thing as he says. Consider the one God sent, high priest of our speaking his words, the anointed Jesus. So now we see that Jesus is anointed of God. This is part of his anointing and his calling of which we're a part. And this is part of the gospel. God sent him and anointed him. To see to it that his words in our mouths come to pass. That's his anointing and we are partakers of it. And the very next word said, who was faithful to him that appointed him or faithful to him that called and anointed him. Glory to God. That's enough to shout about right there. Hallelujah. Now then, now, but, but now you, you can see just with, the, just with the, the, this small amount of information here, the gospel of which we're a part is expanding in our hearts and minds. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go back over there where we were in the book of Acts chapter 10. How God, now here, here it is, here's the message published throughout all Judea. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Man, you could just stop and have a healing meeting right there. <laughs> Praise God. Now then, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. 
We're getting close. Ooh, are we getting close. Galatians chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Receive Jesus' spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. You remember we talked last night in Acts 14 about the young man that heard Paul preach the gospel. It said there they preached the gospel and he heard Paul preach. Huh? What do you think Paul was preaching? Was he preaching Christ? Yeah, by his own, by his own words, he's preaching Christ. Well, what's he preaching? Same message Jesus preached. That, what do you think Peter was preaching there in Cornelius' house? He's preaching Christ. He's preaching the anointed one and his anointing. He's preaching the same message Jesus preached. Amen. That's the reason that message is followed with signs and wonders. Because it is the word of faith. It is the message of faith. Amen. Amen. Now, now notice this and, and watch very carefully because he says this again, verse five. He therefore that ministers to you the spirit, he that ministers to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you does he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Glory to God. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him to, of, for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, say scripture. scripture. All scripture is what? Huh? What'd you say, James? Inspiration. Given by God. Given by God. For inspiration. For inspiration. Instruction. Correction. That's God's word, isn't it? Can we say his word is God? Yes. You better. Because what does John chapter one say? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And inspired writers wrote down what God said and that is Scripture. The Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached. <clears throat> now, who preached? The Scripture. The Scripture preached before the Gospel. <laughs> the scripture preached the gospel. I said the scripture preached the gospel unto Abraham saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. That's the gospel. Amen. That's what Jesus was preaching. Yeah. But now, wait a minute. Let's, let's go right on down. I went all the way through my New Testament and everywhere it said gospel, I wrote Galatians 3, uh, I wrote Galatians, uh, 3 8 right up beside it. And, and, you, and you go back and apply it. You can, you can do that study yourself. Very, very interesting. Very faith building. So then they which be of faith are, say it, blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse, for it's written, cursed is everyone that continues not in all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. 
<clears throat> but the man that does them shall live in them. Christ, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Christ, the anointed one upon whom the Spirit of God came and is power yeah. preached the gospel of the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. He was preaching the gospel, the good news of the blessing. Yeah. And the power of the anointing backed it up. Yeah. Because when somebody believed the gospel of the anointing, the anointing flowed and the blessing empowered and away with the sickness and the disease. Man, I don't preach me thoroughly happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm getting younger, but a minute. <laughs> Woo Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. The anointed one that preached the gospel of, of the anointing has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus, the anointed one, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. And if you want to know more about that, you get what Brother Savell been preaching in this meeting. Amen. We're talking about the gospel here. And let me tell you some more gospel. For you are all the children of God by faith in, in, say it, Christ, Christ, in the anointed, in his anointing, thereby in his blessing. That's gospel. That's good news. <laughs> There's neither Jew nor Greek. Boy, that shot racism in the head, didn't it? That got rid of the whole deal. That got rid of the male race, the female race, the black, red, white race, and, and the, you know, all of the races. All of the races. The spirit of division will take a difference and magnify it in hate. God takes a difference and magnifies it in love. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's the gospel. That's under the anointing. And if you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. What is his promise? All nations in him are blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, I ask you now, what is the gospel of the anointed one and his anointing? The gospel is because of God's abounding overwhelming grace to treat every human being like sin had never happened. The gospel, the good news, the good news, there's no more curse. The jubilee has happened, glory to God. Blow the horn, brother. The jubilee is here. The jubilee himself, he is here. Blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. Poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. 
I just, I just have that image in my, in my thing and in my mind. My, uh, my father in the faith, Oral Roberts, of course, in heaven now, but he, uh, <laughs> he was talking to me about his uncle in uh, Pontotoc County in Oklahoma. That whole family was just, just, just really, really poor. And <laughs> they struck oil on his uncle's land. And he said they hit a gusher. And he said he took his hat off and he stood out there under that oil just flowing and pouring down and he filled that hat up and he slammed that hat back on his head and the oil running down his face and he said, we ain't gonna be poor no more. Now, why did he get so excited? Because in his life, we could say the curse of poverty had been hit hard. Huh? See? That's right. That's right. Amen. That is good news to that man. Mr. Roberts was highly delighted. We ain't going to be poor no more. Just let it all run down all over him. But then Brother Robert said, I'll tell you something. Faith is greater than that. Amen. Glory to God. He said, it'll drill down through all the unbelief. Glory to God and the word of faith and the word of the living God. What's he talking about? The gospel. He's talking about the anointing on this word. Hallelujah. He said, it'll drill down inside the depth of your spirit and it'll hit a gusher of God's power. His healing power, his delivering power, his word power. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, and no demon in hell can stand in your presence right. under the anointing of the gospel of Christ right. Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Now, if somebody asks you anymore, do you preach the gospel? Now you know what to tell them. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Amen. Uh, one one fellow talking about Brother Roberts again. They called him on the on the carpet. You know, back there in the, in the early days uh, of of his ministry, particularly back in the very late forties and uh, 1947, 48, and 49 was when it was really just he just he just got such a hunger for Jesus. He he just he just almost couldn't live. He he just almost couldn't stand himself. He had. He just was so hungry for him. And then when this miracle deliverance ministry began, I mean, God just turned the thing on. And uh, all of a sudden, he was just, just suddenly known all over the world. Now, when you've got Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your ad agent, he was, the Lord instructed he and Miss Evelyn to move to Tulsa, and so they moved up there. And they knew a man there that uh, had a, a gospel tent, and he had it set up and compared to the tents later, those, those uh, you know, 10,000 plus Seats. This this was a small tent, but it but it was it was fairly good size, and um, they went to the meeting, and he invited Brother Roberts to preach, and he did, and man, a uh, man, oh man, oh man, things started happening in that tent. Glory to God! And but the big thing that happened, there was a man <clears throat> walked right in the front door of that tent while Brother Roberts was preaching and took a 30-30 Winchester and shot at him and missed, went right over the top of his head and put a bullet hole right in the top of that tent. And the press got a hold of it. Shot heard around the world. Pentecostal healing evangelist, Oral Roberts. I mean, the next day, Oral Roberts, everybody in the United States knew exactly who they were talking about. They didn't know anything about him yet, but they knew he was an evangelist, he knew he was a healer, and somebody's trying to kill him for it. <laughs> Man, I mean, and whew, 
I'm, the, the battle is on, man. Well, uh, there was a, a group of uh, ministers called him in on the gospel, out on the carpet, and they said, now, uh, we're not going to support you as long as you're preaching this, this healing and uh, the things that, that you preach. And, and his, his preaching that God wanted to bless you financially, they, that rankled up pretty good. And uh, they said, we don't preach that. We, ju we just preach the gospel. We don't preach that healing stuff. <laughs> And then they turn right around and preach the curse. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, now, 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 now don't, don't criticize them. They, they didn't know any better. And the problem was they were still preaching the law. The same thing was happening that was happening because they took God. All of those God's going to get you for that messages. In fact, there was a guy I wrote a song called that. God going to get you for that. Gospel music station, you understand? Gospel music. God's going to get you for that. If God's going to get you, you'd have done been God, darling, a long time ago. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But they got all of that out of the law. That's the same thing that people were preaching and got mad at Jesus for. Amen. Now, let's look at this like this. What if Adam had heard that? Now, folks, he'd been on the other side. He had, he had seen Eden. He had lived in the garden. He knew what God had on his mind. Yeah. He knew what his plan was. Yeah. Mm. I mean, what, 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 what do you think it would sound like you know, he's out there scratching away on that old hard pan dirt, man. He can't get, he can't even get a decent crop of thistles, brother. I mean, it's, you know, the ground is, the ground is just fighting him with all of its might because he's cursed. The ground is cursed on account of it. Now think about it. What if you were the ground? You'd be mad at him too. Because it says that the ground was cursed for his sake. And so the ground is saying, no, I ain't giving you nothing. And after he's had to put up with all that death and all of that, one son murdered the other one. Now the other one has a curse on his head and all of this. How, how, what do you think it is? It is how, how do you think he'd have felt if, if the Lord had come in there and say, uh, Adam, what do you think? What if I just wiped all this out? Cheer up, son. Your sins be forgiven. Let's get back over in that garden. What do you think? Jesus is the second and the last Adam. And we got it all back. Yeah! 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 Whoa, ho, ho. I'll tell you what, there's your healing right there. Just take it. Just, just take it. It's your, just take it. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Jerry and I was preaching in a place one time. There's a young man in, and um, he was, uh, oh, in his late teens, 17, uh, 16, 17, long in there. And he had, a, he had a cast on his arm. And he came up there and we laid hands on him. And, and he went on and, I, and so I heard a commotion going on and looked over there. <laughs> and that boy had gone out in the car and got a bayonet. A military bayonet, a big knife. 
You understand? He had that bayonet stuck up in that cast. He's ripping that cast off. And I looked at him and he's an old man, that dull man. He, you remember him, Jerry? And he's just ripping and tearing at that thing. And he got, I said, what are you doing, boy? He said, I'm tearing this cast off of here. I said, well, I see that. What, I mean, what, what, what are you doing? He said, well, I just heard what you said. Yes. Believe I received and, and take it. And he said, I took it. He said, I got to thinking about it. I can't see any reason why God would lie to me. <laughs> I can't see no reason why he'd lie to me. And he just ripped that cast off. He said, yeah, look at there. I said, yeah, that's fine, ain't it? <laughs> that has stuck with me all of these years. I can't see any reason why God would lie to me. Where's, where's my knife? <laughs> Now, this, this brings us back to that place that we were talking about last night. Why sit we here till we die? Amen. Let's go to the book of James. Verse 22 of the first chapter. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if now, one of the things that, that that's dealing with right there, you deceive yourself when you confess, you believe in healing. Yes, glory to God. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed, da, 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 da. But you won't ever act on it. Yeah, that's right. We, I went down to Beaumont, Texas. Brother Hilton Sutton's dad <clears throat> invited me to come preach in his church. And I went down there for a weekend and stayed three weeks. And we had a mighty outpouring. And it was the first time that, at least that in my memory, that the flu was recognized and identified as Hong Kong flu. And it was the first time in, in my lifetime that a large number of people died from it. And uh, man, I mean, whole, whole, whole schools were closed on account of it. High school football games didn't even play because all of the players were out sick. It was just really, really bad. Well, I got down there on the appointed time and uh, Pastor Sutton said, Brother Kenneth, my goodness. He said, man, my whole church is out sick with the flu. And he said, I don't, I don't know whether anybody going to be there or not. So we prayed and sought the Lord and, and, um, and sure enough, the first service, uh, there were two people. And that evening, that first service is a pastor and his wife and two or three more. And so <clears throat> we, uh, I said, come on, pastor, uh, let, let's, let, let's go. Get your oil bottle. And let's go ministering to you people. And so we went from house to house, a couple of them in the hospital. We went in there, anointed them with all, read the scriptures to them, and, and that we've been redeemed from the curse. And, and you know, you, you, can, you can find all the flu symptoms in the, the, the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. They're there. And anyway, we did all that and read the scriptures, particularly in James. And... Uh, and, and what do you believe? Well, according to that word, I believe I'm healed. Well, what are you going to do? Well, what, what do you mean, Brother Copeland? <laughs> well, healed people ain't in the bed in the middle of the day. Amen. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, here I come. <laughs> And they come crawling out of that bed. 
every one of them got healed. Amen. Except the one guy that refused to get up. He said, well, when these symptoms leave me, I know I'm healed, I'll get up. I said, well, you'll never get up. Well, no, he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm no, no. And he, by his stripes, you were healed. I know it says that. Well, <laughs> you were healed means you are healed. No, I'm not. I said, the word says you are. Well, I'm not. And he got a little huffy about it. Amen. And he stayed in that hospital bed for two weeks and liked to die. If it hadn't been for the grace of God, he would have died. Because you see, what, what he did, he rejected the healing power of God. That means the medicine wasn't working anymore. Because there's not but one that heals, and that's Jesus. It's the Word that heals. Everything else assists. Did you know food doesn't heal? No. A food, food nourishes. Now, if you're deficient in some uh, food element of some kind, and you bring that back, what does it do? It nourishes you, and the healing functioning of your body takes over. And that's God, dear heart. Amen. 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 It's the word that heals. Amen. He liked to die. And like I said, if it hadn't been the grace of God, he would have died. But I mean, but tell you, by the end of that week, that little old church building was packed completely out. People were outside with the windows up where they could hear. And there's a bunch of Baptists got a hold of it, and here they come, lipstick and all, brother. I mean, they, <laughs> and some of those Pentecostal women didn't know whether they liked that much or not, but they fell in love with them, and everybody fell in love, and, and you know, it was just a wonderful time. We had a wonderful meeting down there. Praise God. It's a good thing. Now, but you, be a doer of the word and not hearers only. Now, hang on to that 22nd verse. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his, nat his natural face in a glass. He beholds himself and goes his way, straightway forgets what manner of man he was. Now, why did he forget? Because he didn't look in that mirror with any kind of commitment to remember what he saw. I dare say everybody in this room looked in the mirror today at least once. So tell me in inches or centimeters, anyone, how long your nose is. I'm 78 years old. I don't know how long mine is yet. You know why? I don't care. But <laughs> I promise you this, and some of you probably go home and do it. But <laughs> I promise you this, if you ever were determined to find out how long your nose is and you get up in a mirror with a, with a ruler and you measure it and you take your little notebook or you get your phone and go to notes and my nose is, <laughs> you'll never forget it. Why? You meant to know. You looked intending to act on it. And when you go to the Word and you intend to act on it, it, it is no longer just the Word, but now whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Hallelujah. There is no such thing as any person who believed God's word and did not get results. No, there's not. Now we have failed at it, but it wasn't the word that failed. It is you and me. Well, I tried that faith stuff and it didn't work. No, darling, the faith stuff tried you and you didn't work. But don't get mad at yourself. Uh-uh. Change. There's another word for that. Repent. Turn around. Now listen to me. I'm talking to you. Are you listening? I'm going to put this as simple as I know how. It ain't never too late. You may be 
drawing your last breath. But get healed and testify to it and then go on and die if you want to. <laughs> but die healed. Yeah. It ain't never too late. Glory to God. If it had been, if it had ever been too late, I'd have gone down the tube a long time ago. Oh, no. Oh, not for faith, people. It ain't never too late. I'm telling you, we smile all the way through, brother. Praise God. Strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. Glory to God. I'll close it with this. I, uh, <laughs> back in the earlier days of this ministry, I met a man that really blessed me. He was, he was a missionary in the South Pacific. And um, I met him in Hawaii. In, you know, in fact, at the time his, he was living in Hawaii, Hawaii and he was ministering out from there. And he was diagnosed with cancer. And they, they said, hey, you, you're going to have to get in here and you have to get in here quick. Now, we're, we're making a, uh, an appointment for you. And you, we need you back in here at this time. So he and his wife prayed about it. He went to the Lord about it. And he said, well, what about this? And the Lord started talking to him about his future plans for him. He said, he said, now it's time for you to move back to the mainland because um, there's a church I want you to start. And, uh, and so forth and so on. And he, he talked to him quite lengthy about his, his ministry and his future plans for him. And he said, the Lord didn't say nothing about that cancer. Now, think on it. God has a plan for your life. He has raised us up together and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. We are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. To what? Call to paths. Plan in which we are ordained to walk and live. You, you go get God's whole plan for your life and just, 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 study, just study the next couple of hundred years of it. There will be no mention of sickness and disease in there. There will be no mention of the curse in that plan. You know why? It isn't in his plan. As far as God is concerned, that thing's been over with for 2,000 years. Why should he bring it up in your plan? Amen. Amen. No, that's not in his plan at all. Well, look, look, look over there with me in, in, in Acts, the 20. Look, look in the 22nd chapter of the book of Acts. While you're looking that up, I'll finish telling you what he did. He said, I discussed that with my wife. And he said, you know, uh, why don't we just go on and do what God said? <laughs> He said, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die doing that. <laughs> and so they decided, they started making plans and they went ahead and moved back to the mainland. And he said, you know, I noticed Brother Coleman, he said, I, I never gave that cancer any more thought. And he said, it bothered me for, for a while, Satan trying to get me to go get another doctor's appointment. He said, I guess that doctor in, in, in Honolulu thought I died because I never showed up to his appointment. <laughs> But he said, you know, he said, there for, for a while there, I didn't feel all that good and all that. But he said, then I noticed I started feeling better and, and, and things started working out. And he said, really, I just never paid any more attention to it. And he said, no, I'm, I'm in my mid seventies. And he said, uh, I guess the thing's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> See what he did? He just moved over on God's plan and, and just went, he just went on with it. Just went on with it. Well, of course, there was more to his praying than that, but that essentially was what he did. And what happened then? His, his faith sustained him against every attack the devil tried to put on him. His faith sustained him because he's in the plan. Amen. He's in the will of God. Wow. Now notice this right here. Notice what, what happened here. 22nd chapter of the book of Acts. Um, 
Verse 17, he came to pass when I came again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And I saw him, he saw Jesus, saying unto me, Make haste, get out quickly out of Jerusalem. They will not receive your testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And Jesus said, depart, I will send you far hence to the Gentiles. Jesus didn't even hear that. He didn't respond to it. He didn't even hear it. Why? Well, that, that uh, of course, it wasn't in the plan, but, but there's something more than that. That did not exist in Jesus' memory. I, even I. Blot it out, your transgressions. And I will remember them no more. Now, when God said he doesn't remember, that doesn't mean he refuses to remember. That means it's not in there. I'm just let that soak in. Selah. <laughs> let, just let that soak in a minute. He didn't hear him. Maybe he could see his mouth moving, but he didn't, he didn't even hear him. He just went on with the plan. Now, right here, the apostle Paul could have let that condemnation get on him so strong that it could have gotten him into real trouble, backed him off from what God is calling him to do because he, he's guilt ridden over this. I am totally convinced that the apostle Paul was saying that when he said, forgetting those things which are past, I press forward. I don't think he's saying, well, you know, I just do my best not to remember that. I, you know, I know God's forgiven me. No, no, because in 2 Corinthians, he wrote, receive us. We have defrauded no man and we have wronged no man. Well, right here he said he did. That's right. Glory, I'm telling you, I'm talking to you now. Don't you let something like that get on you about something that happened in your past and, and, and get on you and stay on your mind and worry your heart and worry your head over something and, and give that sickness and disease another 24 hours that it doesn't have coming. The apostle Paul, by faith, he, let, he allowed faith in God to completely eradicate his memory of those times till he could say, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life. Say it with me. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is the curse. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, you must have helped me because I got said what I came here to say tonight. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you. I, I'm going to tell you. All those you watching on the internet, I'm going to tell you right now. Listen to me very carefully. I'm telling you. Your sin will not stop Jesus from healing you. Now, I'm, I may have lost a bunch of religious people right then, but you'll get over it. I'm going to say it again. 
Do you suppose that all of those thousands and thousands of people out there that, that there wasn't anybody out there that had any sin? Ha! <laughs> what did he say to the man sick of the palsy? First thing he said to him, son, cheer up. Your sins are forgiven. Now it made the religious folks there mad at him. But the man believed him. I think it's very obvious that this man was under the force of condemnation. It could have been the reason why he was sick. Amen. But boy, Jesus put an end to it, didn't he? I'm telling you, cheer up. Your sins be forgiven you. Jesus nailed your sin on that cross 2,000 years ago. Glory to God. The blood has been shed. The word has been preached. Now you just say, Lord, I receive my forgiveness right now. I receive my cleansing from all unrighteousness, including this sickness and this disease. Hallelujah. Somebody just got healed in the low back just as I put my hand there. Liver cancer is being healed right now. Glory be to God. Cancer of the lymph nodes is being healed right now. Cancer of the tongue is being healed right now. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. What, what, what's going on right now? I'm preaching the gospel of Christ. <laughs> No more curse. You wipe out all the curse, ain't nothing left but the blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, but Brother Copeland, you don't know what I've done. I don't know what you've done. I don't care. I know what Jesus did. And what Jesus did trumps what you did. You know why? Because the scripture said he is good and his mercy endures forever. And they cried out, Son of David. And Jesus said, Christ, whose son do you say he is? <clears throat> And the scribes and the Pharisees present said, Son of David. And the blind man cried out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy. Who are they calling for? The anointed, the anointed, the Christ, the anointed one. They're crying out for the gospel of Christ. They're crying out. And Jesus said, be it done unto you as you have believed. Hallelujah. They cried for mercy and they got healed. Healing is a mercy. And his mercy endures forever. Don't just stand there. Take it. Don't just lay in that bed. Take it. Amen. Don't just sit there in that bus station staring at that iPad. Take it. Take it now. Listen to me, soldier boy. You listen to me. You're no longer, you're no longer just a soldier. You're a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over PTSD and I bind it and I curse it and I cast it out of you, sir. I cast it out of you, ma'am. I cast it out of you, soldier. I cast it away from you right now and never to return. Now take it. You say it's mine. I take it now. <laughs> Mr. Songwriter, tear that paper up. You've got half written. Throw it in the trash and Write what you heard tonight. Blessing of the Lord 
and no more curse. <laughs> Glory to God. Write that. I saw you in the spirit. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Aha, uh -huh, Mr. Car dealer, I see you sitting there with your head in your hands saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I owe money on all of this. This business is going down the drain. <clears throat> get your mind off that business and get your mind on Jesus. He's the Lord of the harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. God has been working all this time to get that straightened out and get you out of that mess. And you spend so much time talking about how bad it is. And he's trying to tell you how good it is. Now rise and take your place in Christ Jesus and say, Lord, here the thing is. Now there's your healing. Praise God. Don't you dare let yourself get into depression. Amen. Amen. You on the internet and all of you in here, don't you let yourself get into that. No, 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 no. Depression is grieving over something you hadn't even lost. Well, ain't nobody love me. Now that's a lie from hell. I love you, so now get over it. <laughs> and people been coming into your room saying, I love you. No, you don't. No, you don't love me. Shut up and listen to what they're telling you. You're a bit hard to love, you know, <laughs> acting like that. So love and you get love. Amen. I can tell some of the rest of you, uh, hey, you in, you in that hospital, get up out of that bed and start down the hall and start praying for other people. Do it. We were in that terrible car wreck that night, um, 1966. And... Uh, Hadn't been the grace of God, it'd be killed me and my whole family. And I'm sitting there in that chair. John's just a little, little tiny baby, and I had him on my chest. His arm was broken, four of his ribs broken loose from his, from his backbone, and he, he, he's lying there like this. And, and every time he'd breathe, every time I'd breathe, he'd whimper because it'd hurt. And uh, I'm sitting there rocking in that rocking chair, repenting because I knew why it had happened. God had instructed me to go to Oral Roberts University and I, I did a Jonah and was headed somewhere else and, and the whale got me. <laughs> Amen. And thank God. <laughs> thank God he didn't get me good. <laughs> Amen. And I'm just sitting there praying in the spirit and thanking God. And all of a sudden I heard two more people standing behind my chair praying in the Holy Spirit. And I thought, I don't know anybody in Marshall, Texas. Who in the world is that? And I looked over here and there's a, there's a pair of bare feet over here. And there's, no, it's the other way. There's a pair of slippers over here and a pair of bare feet here. And both these men had their hands on my back praying in the Holy Ghost. And, and I mean, they no more than got started good. And I felt it. It felt like something bumped the top of my head. And when it did, it just began to ooze down. And the moment it did, I could, I could taste it. It's sweet. And I thought, oh God, hot honey, hot, hot honey, just warm, sweet honey. That anointing was flowing from the top of my head and it came down and it got across my shoulders and down over my body. And suddenly John went to sleep and suddenly my body's healed. I'm not hurting anymore. And it went all the way down. Gloria dropped off to sleep. Kelly had dropped off to sleep. Gloria was really sick with the flu that night and, and all that. Everybody went to sleep and I'm just sitting there. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. And this man, in a little bit, he, he asked me he, who I was and so forth. He said, <clears throat> we would have been in here earlier. <clears throat> but he said, I'm a truck driver and I had a wreck and my insurance said that I had to come for three days for observation in the hospital. Uh, and if, if I don't stay the whole three days, I lose my insurance, I lose my insurance, I lose my job. 
And he said, so I got, he said, ain't nothing the matter with me. And he said, besides that, I got in here and I'm, go, I'm going around praying for people, getting people born again. He said, this church Christ fellow here, he said, I got him born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he said, now that nurse that brought you and your family down here, he said, that nurse is mean. And he said, she told me if I don't quit praying for people in this hospital, she's going to kick me out and I'm going to lose my insurance and I'll lose my job. So he said, forgive me, I, I would have been in here a little earlier. He said, cause the spirit of God woke me up and said, there's a family checking in that I want you to pray for. And he said, I, I came down here where the Lord led me. And he said, I saw that bad nurse. And he said, he said, he and I been hit out down there behind the water cooler till she got out of here. <laughs> Hey, I needed that man. I needed him desperately that night. My family needed him. I needed him. And God had him there all the time. And right where you are, you can be that right now to somebody. Right now in that hospital, right where you are. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. Jerry, you got anything you want to add to this tonight before we close? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just sensed a, a strong unction from the Lord, Brother Copeland, for you to take authority since debt is under the curse. Mm. And debt is holding God's people back more than anything else. Yeah, it is. And let's take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. So if it's just a blessing and no curse, then let's believe God for debt to be eradicated in God's people. Amen. Amen. Take authority over that. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. Catch hands with one another. We'll come against this thing as a solid front. Amen. A congregation of faith-filled, spirit-filled people. Thank you, Lord. And we're believing God not only for our own people here in this room, but for people all over this internet, all over Amen. the world, from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle. Glory to God. In the name of Thank Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name Thank you, Lord. of Jesus. The scripture states that you need to be strong in this grace also. Amen. For though he was rich, he became poor. That through his poverty, we might become rich. Jesus bore the curse of poverty Amen. so that we might bear the blessing of his wealth Amen. and his financial freedom. Thank you, Lord. All grace. Thank you, Father. Always having, always abounding towards us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In the name Thank you, of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as a prophet of God, as a minister of the gospel, I take authority now. Thank you, Father. Over the curse of debt, over the curse of financial dependence on other people, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus, I break your power now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Poverty. Thank you, Father. You come down from your place of authority. Dad, yes, take your hands off of God's property right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You demons of lack, you demons of diminish, you demons of falling short and always failing, always failing, you devils that have brought a failure a, a failure mindset to God's people. Stop it now. I bind you. And by the blood of Jesus of Nazareth, 
We overcome you now. Ministering angels of God, according to the first chapter of the book of Hebrews, go! Harvesting angels, go! Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Now, I want to I wanna lead you in a confession that I'm prompted of the Lord to do so. I want you to lift your hand to God and say this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am a doer of the word. I am a doer of the word. And not a hearer only. Not a hearer only. And the spirit of debt. And the spirit of debt. Was just broken over my life. Broken over my life. And in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. I will not compromise that. I will not compromise that. If my faith can't produce it. My faith can produce it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm staying out of debt. I'm staying out of debt. I call myself debt free. I call myself debt free. Now give the Lord a shout of praise. Now give Amen. the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Well, I don't know if ever you've been <laughs> drunk on the Spirit of God or not, but it's good drinking. I ain't been this drunk in a long time. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) You know, some alcoholic wants to walk up to me now and say, hey, you drunk? I say, yeah. You drunk? He'd say, yeah. I said, yeah, but in the morning, I'll still be drunk, you'll be sober. <laughs> you drink of your spirit, I'll drink of mine. Hallelujah. No more curse. I said no more curse. I mean, this is good, man. I don't have a, I don't have a hat full of oil, but it ain't gonna be pouring no more. Be poor no more. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you something else. I may not be sober no time soon either. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Well, on the day of Pentecost, they, they got out there on the street and people thought they were drunk. You know why? They were. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got a job for you. <laughs> Lead them in a laugh.